I think what happened. Propaganda. Mr. Dunleavy, are you familiar with the Christian militants? Yes, I am. Uh, can one say that they might possibly want to undermine this country? Because um, right now, constitutionally, the right for women to choose is a constitutional right. People disagree with it, but here's an individual attempting to undermine uh, the protections that are given to women. Would you suggest that that might be uh, compared to trying to undermine this country? Hold on. I thought that Sheila's big gripe was about Christians undermining the United States of America. Oh, actually, she's using the typical liberal strategy of mitigation. She's pointing her finger at Christians to make what them Muslims do not seem so bad. She's talking about the kooky Christians who go around blowing up abortion clinics. And I don't condone blowing up abortion clinics at all. But let's be clear. A Christian group that's blowing up abortion clinics is undermining abortion clinics. They're not undermining the United States of America. The abortion clinic itself, however, is a facility for the undermining of the Declaration of Independence in the U.S. Constitution in that it deprives the first inalienable God-given right to an individual without due process, a right granted upon being created. Not born, created. What Sheila is worried about being undermined is her vision of undermining America. Mm. Abortion doesn't make America great, but to people like Sheila, it does. Even though Planned Parenthood undermines the black community and is the number one place for black people to go to participate in their own genocide. And many black people will go because a lot of them think that it's enlightened to see the right to choose an abortion as more important than the right to life. Sheila is a role model, so to speak. Lots of blacks will follow her lead as she helps carry out the vision of Democrat eugenicist Margaret Sanger. In other words, not only is Sheila a willing participant in undermining our Constitution, not just with abortion, which is not constitutional, but also with income taxes, which aren't constitutional, also with entitlements, that's not constitutional, and taking the fruits of someone else's labor to pay for someone else's so-called entitlements, which is not constitutional. So, Sheila, these Islamo-fascist terrorists want America destroyed. Liberals, conservatives, Christians, Jews, the young, the old, the good-looking, the ugly, the Capricorns, the Geminis, the golfers, the ballers, the snowboarders, the skiers, the Burger Kings and the McDonald's, the Albertsons and the Walmarts, the heterosexuals, the homosexuals, the bisexuals and the trisexuals, Morehouse or the White House, and yes, even the abortion clinics. If it's on American soil and if it ain't their model of Islam, they want to see it all burn. And you're going to try to compare a handful of nutjob Christians to the death toll that the Islamo-fascists are able to tally up. And here in America, Muslims aren't very vocal about their disagreement with Islamo-fascism. Christians, however, are the reasons why others who try to take God's name in vain and try to justify their evil get shut down. We speak out against people who call themselves Christians who take God's name in vain. So you can bring up the KKK if you want to. It was still Christians who pushed them back. And I'll remind you all again that the KKK was founded by Democrats for Democrats. Anyway, Sheila, you can go ahead and try to lay a cross on us Christians. We can take it. You liberals ain't got the backbone to carry responsibilities. All right, Alfonso, tell me what you think about these comments from Sheila Jackson Lee. Uh, yeah, that, that's, that's unfortunate that she's got this view of Christians that she would use, uh, that she would try to point out the uh, Christians to mitigate, you know, the behavior of uh, of uh, Islamo-fascist terrorists. So. Uh, you know, why she would, you know, want to come down. I mean, Christians, basically, I mean, I hate, you know, it's, it's sorry to, to, to pat ourselves on the back, but we're kind of like the best friends in the world, you know, we're the most, you know, charitable groups, uh, you know, and, and for, for her to just, you know, try to, to, to vilify Christianity based on these few instances that you barely count on in one hand, you know, uh, it's, it, it's really sad that she uh, she's part of a machine that's really trying to destroy Christianity. Well, it is a shame, and you know, that's one of the things with this organization I'm working with, with WomenOnTheWall.org. We're taking on issues and taking on the establishment in both parties. And so um, we felt like this was a great opportunity 
to uh, be involved with people like yourself, with Anita Moncrief, and um, you know, I think it's time that we as grassroots and individuals start taking on our elected officials and holding them accountable for what they, uh, how they vote and uh, comments like this. So we really appreciate you coming on with us today. And um, Anita Moncrief has just walked in and we've got some other people who've Skyped in. And um, so we're gonna go over to them. And Alfonso, we really do appreciate your uh, amazing talent and your commentary and um, we'll be showing you know me I like to aggregate and disseminate good good content and you always provide great content for us so we really do appreciate it thank you we've got Maria coming on Maria are you there I am here Alice great we're so glad to have you and Anita is here. Do you have some comments on Sheila Jackson Lee's comments? Thank you very much. And I'm pulling up my statement right now. Okay. Representative Jackson Lee, I urge you to re-examine your remarks regarding quote unquote Christian terrorists in light of your own statement issued last year, released at the height of the debate about the proposed New York City mosque near ground zero. You said, and I am quoting from the official press release you issued on the matter, found on your house website, jacksonlee.house.gov. You state, quote, however, we should also respect one of our most cherished liberties, the freedom of religion. It is imperative that we emphasize that the Muslim Americans who want to pray in downtown Manhattan had nothing to do with the terrorist attacks on 9-11. They are our fellow Americans who want the freedom to express their religion, and we respect their right to practice their faith." End quote. To paraphrase you, we must not paint a whole community with the same broad brush. The actions of a few who espouse a radical system of faith at odds with their doctrinal book should not speak for the whole community, as you so rightly note. Further, the black community, by and large, does profess a belief in the God of the Christian faith. As you know, we are a deeply spiritual community, and your remarks are antithetical to your constituency in the African American community and the people of the largely conservative state of Texas who subscribe to a Christian belief system. I would humbly ask that you consider this as you reflect back on your statement and realize how deeply you've offended your poor constituency. The constituency, the constituency to whom you must shortly appeal to, should you seek re-election. Whether we believe them to be right or wrong, our founding fathers believed in the Judeo-Christian God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and formed our founding documents on this belief system. Please honor and respect this framework when constructing your remarks on religion in future, and, as I have done here, remember your own words on the subject. Humbly submitted by Marie Strader, co-founder, African American Conservatives, and Communications Director for the Frederick Douglass Foundation, California Chapter. Marie, that was perfect. This is Anita. Hi, Anita. How are you doing? Just great. I'm glad you could make it. It's great that you're here representing not only the African American Conservatives, but also the Frederick Douglass Foundation, California Chapter, because it means a lot, because we'll probably be working together in the future on different initiatives. Thank you. I've been working in Houston, Texas for the past year since September of 2010. I've been in Sheila Jackson Lee's district uh, several times and I've noticed different things. She's made um, a new, numerous statements that have been questionable, but this statement that she made is it just outright deplorable and I hope that she will apologize. I don't know if she was not thinking or if it was just something that was said off the top of her head, but it does need to be retracted and it should have been retracted before now, but since it hasn't, that's one of the reasons why we're out here today. Uh, going around in her community, you can see the need. There is a definite need there for people to not only come up out of poverty, but also to be organized in a way that um, gives them a voice. At this moment right now in her community, I don't see that the needs of her constituents are being served by her at all, and she's been in office for over 16 years. What we're trying to do is to bring the Boots of Liberty Task Force to the area to work on nonpartisan issues, issues that are American issues, American values 
values, to bring back those values to the community so they can vote from their values. For too long, we've had outside influences that have come into the community and divided us. And it seems almost like that division is profitable to these people. It's either for political purposes or for financial purposes. So what we're trying to do with the Boots of Liberty Task Force is to come in and to take those outside factors and to push them away and to get back to where the community was before when we were working together towards common issues and trying to get rid of partisan politics that keep us divided. So I ask her humbly today to retract her statement to become part of the solution instead of continuous, continuously being part of the problem and the reason why people point to partisan politics and say we have issues in the communities, especially in the minority communities.